What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to read simple PDF files with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at reading PDF files. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so in this video, we're going to start to look at dealing with PDFs with Kinter. Now, PDFs are a very big and complicated subject because every PDF file can be slightly different. None of them are formatted in the right way. None of them have the same components. Some have pictures, some have, you know, just text, some have fields that you fill out. It's just very complicated. So in this video, we're just going to look at reading basic PDF files. And I've created just a very basic PDF file, welcome.pdf. I saved it in my GUI directory that we've been working with throughout these videos. And you can see it just says, welcome to Codemy. It's got some text, you know, no big deal. Just a very basic PDF file. And what we're going to do in this video is open this PDF file in a Kinter text box, right? So you can see right here, uh, we've got it. We can clear it. We can open. There it is right there, welcome.pdf. We can open it, boom, it pops it up. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. So I've got a file called read underscore pdf.py. We've got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So in order to do this, we need a little thing called a py pdf2. So there's lots of different libraries and modules out there that work with PDFs with Python. Some of them work better than others. Some of them are deprecated. Some of them are current. Uh, it's sort of just a crapshoot. This one works okay. We're going to use it. So that's what we're going to use in this video. So it's uh, capital P, lowercase y, and PDF2, all uppercase. So we actually have to install this in order to use it. So let's head back over to our terminal. Now I'm in my C GUI directory. This is where we have all of our files saved. And now we just go pip install pi PDF. Two. Now I've already installed this, so it's going to tell me that, but on your computer, it'll go through a little thing and, and it will install it. And that's all there is to it. So we're also going to use a file dialog box in this video. So when we click the menu button, a little box pops up that we could select the file. We don't have to do this, but we've done this so many times. It's really easy. We already know how to do this. So let's go from to Kinter. Let's import file dialog. Okay. So, so let's create a text box and we've done this before. If you haven't seen the videos on creating a text box, we've done some on creating text editors. We've got a whole series on it on the playlist. Check the link in the comment section below for the playlist and you can search around and find those. So let's just call this minor score text. And this is a text widget. We want to put it in root and let's give this a height of like 30 and a width of like 60. And then let's my underscore text dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 10 just to push it down the screen a little bit. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that looks okay. So it's read underscore PDF dot pi. So let's go Python read underscore PDF dot pi. And when we do, we get this box and it looks okay. So, okay, so far so good. Now let's create a quick menu and we've done lots of menus in the past. So let's go my underscore menu. This is going to be a menu. We want to put it in root. Then let's go root dot config and set our apps menu to my underscore menu. And now let's add some drop downs menus. And let's call this file underscore menu, call it really anything you want. And it's going to be a menu and we want to put it in my menu. And let's put the tear off equals to false. If you remember those are those little dots above the, the menu when you click on it, we don't want those. So we'll take those off. Always bugs me, <laughs> but uh, we always have to do that. So let's go my underscore menu dot add underscore cascade to add this guy. And let's set a label equal to file. Now remember, this is a lowercase l, so is this one. Sublime makes it look, look like an uppercase or capital, but it's not. Okay, so then we set the menu to file underscore menu. Okay, now let's add some commands here. So let's go file underscore menu dot add underscore command. And let's give this a label of, let's say open, we want to open a file. And let's give it a command of open underscore PDF. We haven't created that yet. We'll create that in just a second. Then I'm going to copy this. I'm going to add a few more here. 
let's for this one, let's put clear. And for this one, let's put exit. And for the exit, we can just do a root.quit to quit our app. And for clear, let's just call clear text box. Okay, so let's create this one. And actually, let's add another one here. Let's go file underscore menu dot add underscore separator. We'll add a little line in between the exit menu and these two things just to make it look a little nicer. Okay, so now let's create this clear text box one real quick because that's super easy. So let's come up here and let's say clear the text box. And so let's define this. And now we just want to go my underscore text dot delete. And we want to delete from position 1.0 to end. So let's go ahead. Well, we got to create this other one real quick here. So let's let's do the uh, open PDF function just to get this up on the screen. And let's go open our PDF file. And we want to define open PDF. And for now, let's just go pass just so that we can test this. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and run to make sure this looks okay. So here we go. And I'm just gonna type some stuff in here. We can click clear, it deletes it, so that works. And open doesn't do anything yet, and exit, and you can see there's our little separator bar there. And exit, exit the program. So okay, so far so good, we are moving right along. So this is all stuff we've already done in the past. We already know how to do all this stuff. And uh, this is too, actually, we're gonna create we want to grab the file name of PDF file. So here I'm going to create a variable called open underscore file, call it anything you want. And this is going to be a file dialog. We've done this a lot in the past. And we want to ask open file name. Right? So we've done this many, many times. So we know there are a bunch of different properties we can set here. So we can set the initial dir which is the initial directory. And I'm in my C colon forward slash GUI directory. That's where this read underscore PDF file that we're working on is created. That's where I saved my PDF file. So this is the initial directory I want to pop up in the, in the file dialog box when we open it. So, okay, we can do that. Now we can give our box a title and doesn't really matter what, let's just say open PDF file. Okay, now what file types do we want to be able to open? Well, basically just PDF files, right? So let's on another line, go PDF files. And those are of file type. Uh, let's go star dot PDF. And if we wanted to get really fancy, we could put another one on here. And we could say like all files, just for fun. I usually do that, and that's going to be star dot star. Okay, so we can close that. So this will open our file dialog box. It will assign whatever file we click on its location to this open file variable. Now we can use that open file variable. So let's uh, let's check to see if there is a file. Right, so. You might open the file dialog box and then click cancel. And if you did, there's not going to be anything assigned to this. So we need to make sure we actually clicked on a file to open. So let's go if open underscore file. Now, all right, here's where it gets fun. Everything up until now has been stuff we've already looked at before. Now we want to look at how do we actually open a, a PDF file. So I'm going to set a variable. I'm going to call it PDF underscore file. And we're going to set that equal to a pi PDF2 dot PDF file reader. And you'll notice the capitalization in here is important. So the P here in PDF is uppercase, but the DF is not the F in file and the R in reader are all capitalized. Now what file do we want to open? Well, we want to open this open file one that we've designated up here, right? So we could just pass that right in there. Okay, so now when you open a file, a PDF file can have many pages and you have to sort of do this for every single page. I mean, you can loop through there and we're not gonna do that in this video because we've only got one page in our uh, PDF file, right? It's just one page, but you have to tell the program what page to deal with. So I'm gonna create a variable called page and let's make a little comment here. Let's actually do a couple comments. Open, say 
the PDF file, uh, set the page to read. So here, page is gonna be PDF underscore file, which is this guy right here, right? Dot get page. Now, what page do we want? We want the first page. And just like Python list, this start at zero. So the first page of our PDF file is page zero, right? So we were saying, hey, get the first page of our PDF file. And our PDF file only has one page, so we're all good there. So now let's extract the text from the PDF file. So let's set another variable. I'm just gonna call this page, I don't know, stuff, <laughs> right? So or maybe page content, I don't know. And that's just gonna be page, this page that we just extracted, page number one, or in our case, page zero, because it starts at zero. The first page is page zero. So we want page zero. And what do we wanna do? We want to dot extract text, right? Okay, so now everything in the PDF file, or at least on page one, which is the only page we have, has now been assigned to this variable page stuff, right? So now we can add text to text box, right? Remember our good old text box here? We called it my text. That's just, uh, let's see, this guy right here. And what do we want to do? We want to insert it. Where do we want to insert it? We want to insert it right at the top of the text box the one position and what do we want to what do we want to put in there we want to put all this page stuff right okay so let's go ahead and save this and we did that pretty quick but i don't see any errors hopefully we fingers crossed we didn't screw this up it's tuesday we never make mistakes on tuesday okay so we've got file let's go open uh oh we've already got an error so let's see oh i misspelled initial directory why didn't you tell me? <laughs> All right, right there. So this should be initial DIR. We never make mistakes on Tuesday. We always make mistakes on Tuesday. <laughs> All right, so let's try this again. Okay, so file open. All right, we see here's our only PDF file in this directory. You'll notice it's opening the GUI directory, which is what we told it to open in the initial directory. Once we spelled initial directory correctly. Now we can click on this and boom, there it is. Welcome to codemy.com. My name is John Elder. I run codemy.com where we've taught over 100,000 people to code. Use coupon code YouTube one. I can't help getting a coupon code blurb in there, right? Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership today. So you pay only $49 for over 47 online video courses with hundreds of videos. Man, I was thinking about it the other day, not to change the subject, but 47 courses. Let's say I charged $20 a course like a normal person would. That would be $940 for all of my courses. You get them for 49 bucks. That is a steal, but I'm just saying, <laughs> anyway, that works. So that was super, super easy. And again, this was a very basic thing, right? We were opening one PDF file. It has one page. There's not really any formatted text. There's not any images to deal with. There's not any fill out boxes. It's just text and we're spitting it on the screen, but you got to start somewhere and uh, it's pretty cool. So this high, PDF2 thing is kind of neat. If you want to look at the documentation, you can go to pythonhosted.org forward slash pi PDF2. Pi and the PDF are all capitalized. And you get this thing. And you'll notice this is what we did. We worked with the file reader class. So if we click on that, and in fact, we look at our code real quick, you can see PDF file reader, right? That's what we're dealing with. And that's what this thing is, PDF file reader. And you can kind of read through here and see some of the stuff. If we look at our code. What did we do right off the bat? We got the page number, right? So if you're interested in that, you can come through here and read. And here's the different functions and stuff. Get fields, get text fields, get num pages, get page. That's the thing we worked with, right? Get page. So right, get page. So if you want to read more about that, but then if you click on this, because what that returns is a page object. So you can click on that and read all about page objects and all the things you can do with the returned page objects. What we did was we extracted the text, right? But there's other things you can do, you know, and you can read all about all this stuff. And that's just what we worked on today. If you really want to dig into here, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you could read. And it's really kind of interesting if you're interested in looking at documentation. I know a lot of people don't like to dig through the documentation. I'm a documentation geek. I love reading about this stuff. So if you're interested, you can read all about that stuff there. 
Uh, but for now, we've got ourselves a nice little uh, file that opens a basic PDF file and, and spits it out onto the screen in a nice little text box. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeby.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeby.com, and I'll see you in the next video.